Well, shalom. Welcome. It's another beautiful day that the Lord God has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it, right? Let's go to prayer. We'll finish off this uh, teaching on spiritual warfare. Lord God in heaven, I thank you. I thank you for the sun that's shining. Thank you for this time of year where the life is renewed. All the plants come back and we get to look forward to the crops, working on them. Lord God, I thank you for the food that you make sure that we have available to us each and every day. I thank you for the, the clean water, for the clean air. And for those that don't have it, Lord God, I pray for them. Let them find a way. I thank you for the, the message. I thank you for the hearts of the people. Satan, listen up. You have no place here. You have no place in the tools used to send or receive this message. You have no place in the message itself. Back off in the name of Yeshua, you and all the powers of darkness. I release the Holy Spirit to come over us, to protect us, and to guide us in all truth. Lord God, we glorify you through the name of your Holy Son, Yeshua. Amen. <clears throat> all right, so, as I said, we're going to finish off the teaching on spiritual warfare and fasting. And, and today we're going to get into the fasting part of it. All right, so we're going to spend quite a bit of time getting into some depths about about fasting now there are different types of fasts okay and there's different types of fasting basically fasting is going without something that your body has to have all right uh you need to bring your flesh into a place where it will it will, it will give up you know it'll 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 stop uh warring against you to, at least to some degree right so that you can walk in to the kingdom of god in the spirit now how many days of fasting does it take to get there well i don't know it depends on what you're going through what you know what what uh, god's doing with you but probably a good 30 30 to 40 day fast uh is is what it's going to take all right nothing but water and maybe some juices now that this the spirit world <clears throat> when you can get your body to where it's almost dead all right then the spirit world become much more clearer to you because you can get things out of the way, right? Physical things, things of the world. And then the spirit world can, can open itself up to you much, much easier. In Matthew 6, 16, we have Yeshua speaking here and he says, Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to fast. <clears throat> so what did they do? They, they had put ashes on their faces. That's, you know, that's what they did. He says, verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. So through this scripture, we understand, you know, there's a problem if you're going to fast openly. All right. Openly meaning, you know, you're going to let everybody know you're fasting. Hey, Joe, I'm fasting. Just so you know, no, no, we don't, we don't want to do that. Right. <clears throat> uh, people that come to a place of being spiritual. Right. And I'm not really sure what, what that means, but <clears throat> if there is such a place, it's a very deep place with God. And they didn't start there. They, you know, you don't get there in the first six weeks, six months, or six years of serving God. I mean, you actually get there when you give up the ghost, right? When that's when you actually get there. But this journey we're on is an ever-learning process, all right, an ever-growing process, and it's not something that just magically happens overnight. You, you, you have to understand that, right? But the problem is. We get excited about things, we get uh, turned on to things, and then a lot of people just get enough enough uh, word in them to become dangerous to themselves and anybody that's around them, right? <clears throat> so when, we, when, you, when you get into fasting, it has to be something that you do as unto the Lord God, all right? And that's why the intercessors are so special, because, you know, they're up praying for people. They're up lifting, lifting up the pastors of the churches, lifting up the prophets around the world. They're, they're, they're in the middle of the night, them and God just taking care of that, right? <clears throat> and there's no, there's no horn sounding, you know, because they scored a goal. You get what I'm saying? They, they, they don't get glorified over it, right? They get up and they pray and they do what they do. And that's, that's also what fasting is about, right? 
you, you, it's between you and God. You're trying to hear, you're trying to open yourself up to receive what it is that God is trying to, trying to give you, trying to work with you. You know, it could be correction, could be uh, direction, right? But that's, that's what we need to focus on if you're, if you're going to get into fasting. So as we read in the scripture, what, what the Lord's trying to get across here, obviously, is that fasting is something that we, we don't do to glorify ourselves by telling everybody, hey, I'm fasting, hey, okay. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face. So that's what, that's what indicates to God that you've, you've declared a fast, all right? You're looking, you anoint your head with the oil, you wash your face, and then you've declared the fast, right? So that's what you do. You get out a bottle of oil, anoint your head, wash your face. That thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father, which is in secret, and thy father, which is which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. All right. So he's he's going to reward you openly for your fasting that you're doing in secret. He's going to do that. Now let's look at Matthew 9, the 14th and 15th verse. And it says, excuse me, then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast oft? But thy disciples fast not. So how come how come we got a we got to fast, but your disciples don't have to. What's, what's going on here? Um, and, you know, we want to say in that some, some people believe that fasting is not for today. All right. That, that's uh, some people teach and believe that out there. Um, but fortunately, more and more people over the last <laughs> number of years are beginning to understand that there's something more to this relationship with God than just showing up to church. Right. There, there's something more to this relationship with God than just reading a couple of scriptures every day and saying, okay, I did it. You know, um, praying for, for 10 minutes every other day. We want the connection. We want to receive, right? So there's got to be more to it than just going through the motions of church. All right. <clears throat> Matthew 9, 15. And Jesus said unto them, can the children of the bridegroom mourn? as long as the bridegroom is with them. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then they shall fast. All right, so he's saying they're not fasting because I am here with them. All right, they don't need to fast because I am with them, right? Think about it, if you're, you're, if you're fasting to seek God, if he's right there with you, 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 don't, need to, <laughs> you don't need to worry about it, right? All right. But he tells them that there's a time I'm going to leave, and then they're going to have to fast. So is fasting for today? According to, you know, by the scripture we just read, it says, when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then they shall fast. Okay, so that means that fasting is for today. All right, so I'm going to leave, leave and they're, they're going to need to fast. So there's, there's no doubt. It's absolutely for today. Now, there are different types of fasts. All right, we're going to talk about a little bit of that, but but what I want you to do is understand that it, it's going to be a way of life, okay? It's, it's got to become a way of life. You have to be able to enter into the supernatural world, right? And really, when we say enter in, okay, I'm talking about being sensitive to it, right? Being sensitive to it. When, you, when you're fasting, you're more sensitive to the supernatural world than when you're not fasting. Why? Because when you're not fasting, your, your, your focus is on the, the worldly things, right? The five senses that we've talked about. Uh, the five senses guide us around this world and lead us over here and tell us what to do over there. <clears throat> you can, you can <laughs> shut that down a little bit by fasting, right? It's also a type of cleansing for your body, right? There's health places if you, if you were to, uh, look around I, i'm seeing it more and more talked about uh where you know you're got some type of a body issue and health places will put you on a fast right for diabetes for people that are grossly overweight and so they they start to move in that direction all right so let's say you decide that hey i want to i want to try this this fasting right i want to get into that i i, I want to be more sensitive so you say to yourself, should, should I, should I fast? And you decide maybe, 
maybe, yeah, I think I should start fasting. I want to learn to do that, right? And that's the thing. You, you need to learn to do it, all right? You need to learn to do it. If you've never fasted before, don't, you know, decide tomorrow you're going to do a 40-day fast, all right? Learn to fast. Then we get the other side of it. Well, I don't fast unless the Lord God tells me to fast. Well, that's fine. Okay, and that can be scriptural. And you can do that the rest of your life on this earth that way. Um, but there's there's a little more to it, all right? Uh, there are fasts that God calls us on, right? There are fasts that you call yourself on. And, and you know, going through that, people might might say, I don't understand. You didn't, God didn't call you on this fast. You're just doing that to yourself. Yes, because we're training ourselves, all right? Training ourselves, bringing ourselves into the subjection of the things of God, right? Bringing ourselves into the subjection of the things of God. And, and in the days that lie ahead, you know, there's going to be a great necessity that we understand fasting, that you're able to fast because you're going to have to fast. All right. It, it comes down to um, the, the time that's coming. You know, you may look in the cupboard and, and think, well, uh, we didn't we didn't put quite enough food away. You know, there's there's periods of time where you may have to fast. And you want to understand, you can already be in the place of knowing how to do it. So if you start now, you train your body, right? And you go through the go through the learning, and then you'll already be there. So again, talking about the five senses, controlling our body, right? That's what we we know. I don't want to touch that because it's hot, right? Something smells good over here, smells bad. I won't go over there. We learn to follow the direction of our five senses. When you, when you start to begin to learn how to fast, <clears throat> your body is going to scream and cry and kick and tell you, no, we're not going to do that. All right. And so you have to be set. You know, you have to be sure that, uh, you know, this is the direction we're going, body, and I don't care. Right. Yes, we're going to fast. So first thing you do, you're trying to learn. You get up in the morning, you anoint your head, wash your face and Everything's going real well. You're like, all right, here we go. We're fasting. You're fighting it, right? All day long, you're, you're, you're having that mind battle and your mind's trying to tell you, no, 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 I'm hungry. And you're, no, no, I can beat this. I can beat this. So you're doing great, right? Hallelujah. You made it through the first day. Everything's gone pretty good. You had to, you had to yeah, smack your flesh a few times, but you're winning, right? You're feeling good about yourself. And then your flesh starts screaming out, well, it's time to eat now. Time to eat now. No, 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 no. Flesh, look, I'm, I'm, I'm fasting before the Lord God here. Yeah, but we're hungry. We, we, you know, we need to eat. So now, now I want to put into this. You need to know that fasting and prayer go together. Okay, hand in hand, horse and carriage, if you will. Uh, if you're going to fast, you want to make sure you're praying, because if you don't pray, you may as well not have fasted. Right. So in order not to succumb to that, that voice that's telling you to eat that, you know, is not God, uh, you know, I'm hungry now. I'm hungry. So don't go sit at the dinner table. You know, you're, you're trying to learn to fast and everybody's eating and you're going to sit there and not eat. You know, that's 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 not probably not what you want. So a good a good idea. Instead of doing that, just go into the other room. All right. Go into the other room. And begin to study or begin to pray right and now you're not being tested you're not putting yourself through that with all the smells of food and watching people chew and so on and so forth right all right there's no sense in that so just go in the other room don't even be in there and pray right pray make sure you pray maybe study the bible maybe you know chat with 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 a family member or whatever just avoid be smarter than being in that that room with the food all right so like i say day two comes right you made it through day one <clears throat> you get up early you get get a drink of water because you want to make sure you're getting your hydration right you get yourself ready and there's there there goes the flesh starting to scream again right we're hungry we're hungry you're hungry my oh, man you got to battle it in the morning right so you 
you get to noon, another big old glass of water and the flesh is just still giving you a hard time. You make it through dinner time, go pray, right? Time to pray, shut the door. Now, some people are going to get headaches, all right? Um, some people are going to get sugar withdrawals and they're going to, your body is screaming at you. It's telling you, you better eat. The headache will go away if you feed me. No, no, we're fasting. So, so you see the battle. I'm trying to lay out the battle. I'm trying to prep you for, for the battle, right? All right. You go to bed. You wake up another, another uh, drink of water, right? You're just trying to put something in there to get it to get it to stop screaming, right? Uh, so like I say, you, you got to understand that part of it, right? Now, if, if it turns out to be, if it's a God called fast, you won't have the headache, all right? You won't, you won't have the hunger pains after you anoint your head and wash your face, all right? But this is what we're explaining here. The, the scenario is not a God called fast. We're talking about uh, specifically if you decide that you're trying to learn, you're trying to grow, and you're trying to get, get closer to God through it all, that's the scenario I'm laying out here, all right? Um, it's, it's, it's me deciding I want to get closer to God, all right? But your mind begins to take over in those situations. Your mind begins to doubt, all right? You make it the three full days, right? You want to do a three day, let's say you make it the, the, the three full days. And, uh, you know, to be honest, at that point, your, your, your flesh, for the most part, will, will shut up. The sugar withdrawals will leave, the headaches will stop after three days, three to five, okay? So I'm not going to promise you that after three days, it's, it's over, but somewhere in three to five, it, it comes to a point where you can go from there to 21 and you, you know, the journey is <laughs> the first, what I'm saying is the first three to five days are the hardest. Okay. And the rest of it's pretty smooth sailing. It's just the, because you just, I don't even know why, but that's how, that's how it seems to go right Your Your, your flesh basically gives up. It says, all right, I give up. We're going to die. You know, you don't care about me. We're going to die. Right. And, and you, you realize that it's like, well, I'm doing what, what I'm doing to get closer to God. I'll be better off without this, this old flesh thing anyways. Right. So you make it 10 days, you make it 12 days, 14, 21, 30 days. Right. There, there's, there's, and by the time you get to that sixth or seventh day, you'll be able to sit at the table with the family. And, and you just drink your water and it'll be no problem at all, right? Now, again, there's, there's differences between the God called fast and the personal I choose to fast. If you are on a God called fast, you will know when to end the fast because you will hunger, all right? You will hunger. And, and, and the day that you begin to hunger, well, you, you, may as well, you may as well break the fast because it's over, all right? But again, we're talking about uh, the calling ourselves at this point. And uh, when it's time to break that fast, all right, especially if you're new into this, especially you're just, you're learning to, you know, you did your first three day fast, you did your first five day, whatever, whatever it is, you make it to that point, you need to know that you need to break that fast carefully, all right? A lot of people have hurt their bodies physically because they did not understand how to break the fast correctly, right? I'm talking about the food that they take, that's right. All right. Daniel, Daniel 10, 2. Daniel 10, the second verse. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread. Neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. So he fasted. He ate no pleasant bread. Uh, in this scenario, uh, he must have had something because it distinctly says pleasant bread. Right? So there must have been something that he had taken during that time. So uh, Matthew 4, 1. Matthew 4, 1. Then Jesus 
led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil or was then was jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was afterward and hungered and of course we know that that was a total fast he didn't take water he didn't take any food no vitamins herbs nothing else now don't decide that you've heard god tell you to go on a, a 40 day total fast please you know <laughs> You, your body can go about three days without water and then that's the end all right then you become dehydrated the only way that that works what we just read is if it's done supernaturally by god all right can god do that yes god can do anything all right i think we if you if you read into it you'll find that he did it with moses right but the fact of it is don't get silly and don't get stupid about this you got to understand the devil would love for us to just run around and decide that we're going to make seven to 10 days without any food or water huh? and end up being in the hospital. Devil would love that. And then that would be a real witness to God, wouldn't it? Right. And that, and that type of thing happens, right? There's people that don't understand how this works. So, so in that scenario, if you, if you believe that God has called you to, uh, you know, start a fast, a total fast, then, then maybe get a hold of the leadership and get some counsel over the deal. Okay. Um, anyway, when you, when you anoint your head and wash your face, you're saying to the Lord God, Lord, I need you. I need you. All right. I need, I need divine guidance from the throne room. I want to be certain Lord God, that what I'm doing will please you. And it's not just me, right? Not me. All right. Because we've, we've talked about all the voices crying out. There's, there's many voices. Excuse me, coming from three different areas. And uh, so you want to be sure that you're hearing the voice of God. You want to be able to hone in. You want to be able to, to, to understand what he's saying to you, right? And I believe that, that God is going to set his prophets in places. He's going to give people access to them. And, and we're going to have start ha having access so that... You know, we can get some, some uh, information, right? <laughs> okay, Daniel 9, 3. I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments right and and that's you want you don't want to miss that last part and to them that keep his commandments all right <clears throat> last i think was last last time i preached to you talked about the fact that you know these the, the curses curses are just automatic the devil didn't pour out the curse we poured it upon ourselves right and uh, I think a lot of people are going to have some hard time trying to understand that. But the fact is, it's it's our own work. All right. We did it to ourselves, made bad choices. To further this you, you, uh, thing with fasting, there are people who come to a place where they're grieved. They have no desire to eat. That's a type of fasting. That's that's talked about in Daniel 6.18. And in Matthew, it talks about prayer and supplication with fasting. Again, prayer was put into it. Okay. Uh, he was bringing himself to a place where he wanted to make sure, um, you know, back in those days, you, we read about the sackcloth and ashes. That's what it was back in those days. Everybody knew you were fasting. I'm guessing that probably the secret back then was you just, you just kept your mouth shut about what you were fasting about. Right. Um, Matthew 15, 32. Then Jesus called his disciples and or then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way. So there was no food available. If they had left, they would have had to fast. Now, you could say that being without food, you're fasting, right? Um, now what it, what fasting is not 
I want to be very clear about this. Fasting is not a tool that you use to try and move God, all right, to, to, to get God to do what you want to get done. It's not, it's not a tool to force the hand of God. Let's put it that way. It's not a tool to force the hand of God. How many, how many times, you know, you hear stories, right? I'm going to fast and I'm going to pray until my drunken husband comes to the Lord God and get and receives the Holy Ghost, right? Well, you may, you may go to heaven fasting and not achieve that, all right? Fasting is not to be dictating to God, all right? Now we're going to get into some scripture that's going to help with what fasting really is about. And it's very exciting to think about, you know, how you can do it right and how you can get some success, all right? But you want to... You want to be real sure that when you're doing it, you know, don't waste your time going through the motions. Do it for the right ways and the right reasons with the right heart. All right. And everybody needs to get on the same page with that. Zechariah 7.5. Speak unto all the people of the land and to the priests, saying, When you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even those 70 years, did ye at all fast unto me, even to me? So he said, why did you fast? Huh? Why did you, that's what he's saying. Why did you fast? Why were you doing this for yourself? Were you doing it for yourself? And, and that's the thing that you need to examine before you go, you know, before you get into fasting, examine your motives. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Now, I hope that we already gave you the information for understanding the motives. You fast in order to, Move into the supernatural realm and become sensitive to God, right? For those of you that work with the small, still voice, that becomes clearer. That becomes clearer. And, and that's the reason you fast, right? You have to come, come to the point. You see, uh, the whole key with God is him trying to find a means that he can communicate with us and that we can understand that it came from him and that he's communicating from us. All right, and we spent a, a lot of time talking about familiar spirits. Um, I think hopefully everybody can understand that a, an angel of darkness can come as an angel of light. We know that Samuel did not know the voice of God the first time he heard it. It is something to be learned. All right. So again, don't fast to try and force God's hand. You are fasting to be able to have understanding. You're fasting for knowledge. You're fasting for wisdom that you have asked God for, and then God will be able to guide you, right? The thing is, a lot of people always already have a preset of, of what they want, right? Well, Lord, I've anointed my head and washed my face, and, and, and I'm going to fast exactly uh, two days and, and 38 minutes to get Uncle, Uncle Joey delivered from being a drunk. Amen. You know, and, and yes, I said it ridiculously on purpose, because some people get that ridiculous, right? Uh, we need to understand that God desperately wants to guide each and every one of us. He desperately needs to guide us. And like I said, fasting is also good for your body, but it's better for your spirit, man. It's better for you to get in tune with your spirit and the spirit of God. All right. And when you get to the point of the the, the 30 days, right? You find that the last little while you'll be more in the spirit than out of the spirit, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's as close as most of us are going to get before we give up the ghost, but you can get there. You, you can get there, all right? But you can't get there playing games. Games are not going to get you there. You, you got to do it with your heart right before God saying, look, go out, look, God, it's, it's, it's just me and you, you know, I just want to do right. Teach me, show me the things that I'm missing. What are the things that I should have been doing that I'm not doing? And, and, and those hearts, that's when God can, you know, he can come to you and say, come on. Because he will be able to show, he will be able to bring correction. All right, he will be able to guide and give directions as to where, where we're going. All right, Isaiah 58.1. Isaiah 50, 58.1. It says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily 
and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteous and, and forsook not the ordinances of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast, an acceptable day to the Lord? Is this, is not this the fast that I have chosen? All right, we'll stop and notice that it's changing direction, right? He was, he was very clearly explained to them in that last little while that that's not what he was going for. And then he says, is, is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread unto the hungry, and that thou bringest the poor that are cast out into thy house? And when thou seest the naked, thou cover them, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? So if, if you're fasting for what we just read in 6 and 7, you know, you're fasting to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke, that is what the fast is about to deal thy bread to the hungry, bring the poor that are cast out in your house. See, see, you know, you see the naked, you cover them. And then eight, eight says, then, then after you've done, after you've taken care of six and seven, then shall thy light break forth as the morning and thine health shall spring forth speedily and thine health <clears throat> and thy righteousness shall go before thee and the glory of the Lord shall be thy re reward. All right. What is that? The, the glory of God will come and sit on you if you fast and fast correctly. All right. If you're going to do it in a religious way or, or a way to invoke God into doing something you want, then all I can say is, is you're, you're all wet behind the ears. It's not going to work. All right. It didn't work then and it's, it's not going to work now. So he's saying if you if you will do these things in the sixth and seventh verse. All right. Then. The light will break forth as the morning, right? So it's going gonna, it's gonna to flood upon you. Your health is going to spring forth speedily. So you see, you do it in the right way, it's going to turn out for you. It's going to be good, all right? <laughs> you do it in the wrong way, you're just spinning your wheels, all right? You're in a place of religious uh, mindset, and it's not going to work for you. You see, again, there's blessings and there's curses. You do it right, you're blessed. You do it wrong. Then the devil came and poured, no, you poured the curse on yourself, all right? Knowledge is in the book. We're destroyed for the lack of knowledge, right? And that's what the Bible says. Knowledge is in the book. All right. The key is, is who, who has enough knowledge, right? Revelation knowledge, spiritual knowledge, and experience to be able to com convey by the anointing so that we can get it into the hearts of the minds of the people, all right? And that's, that's, you know, everybody expects revelation to be this ooh, from heaven, you know, uh, it comes from heaven, but it's, it's not the Holy Ghost goosebumps running down your spine that, that people tend to think it is. All right. Isaiah 58, nine, then thou shall call and the Lord shall answer. Thou shall cry and he shall say, here I am. So you want to, you want to hear from God? Here I am. If. Thou take away the midst of, from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. God said, you know, don't be into that. Uh, stop it. Quit pointing the finger. Quit judging. And that's a, that's a key to this thing. Thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, and putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity. And thy darkness shall be as noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. And make fat thy bones. And it shall be like a water garden, like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. And they, they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. 
And what are those old, old waste places as well? Understand this is end time stuff, right? The old waste places for us, rebuilding them is coming back to Torah, being Torah observant. Thou shall raise up the foundations of many generations. And that, and that's what we're doing. All right. We're, you know, <laughs> when you read in it talks about how Ephraim viewed the law, you know, that it said that he would count it a strange thing. And that's, that's what we did, right? You were part of that remnant. We are part of that remnant. This is going on all over the face of the earth, little groups, right? Those that heard God say, come out Ephraim, come out from the world. It pricked their hearts. They don't even know. And, you know, like a lot of cases, people don't know why they're here. They just know that it's right in their heart. Just like when you found Yeshua, you knew it was right. Right. You knew it was the Lord. You, you know, you, because you have ears to hear, right. And you're hearing God say, come on, come on, raise up the foundations of many generations and thou shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Right, we're going to restore those paths. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, I'm just going to, you know, put a little foot, footnote in there. That's not quite the way that's that's supposed to read. All right, it's it looks like it's telling us here to turn away from the Sabbath. <clears throat> no, it's it's telling us to keep the Sabbath. And if you're not, if you're unclear on why I would say that, just look at what the rest of it says, and, and you'll be able to you'll be able to put it together. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thine own pleasure on my holy day, right? So, so turn away from doing thy own pleasure on my holy day, the Sabbath, and call the Sabbath a delight, right? The holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding known, thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. From doing thy pleasure on my holy day. Oh, sorry. Had that in there twice. Then thou shalt delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. All right. Now there are divine appointments, divine appointments of time in which God, you know, there are certain things that are going to happen. And you can be in the right place at the right time. You know, that's all there is to it. You can... You can be led by the by the spirit to be in the right place at the right time. And we all cry out for God to lead us, right? And God led and guided you here. All right. We are to fast because the Lord God, or the, the Lord Yeshua, sorry. We're to fast because the Lord Yeshua is no longer with us. All right. He's with us inside. He's no longer, we can't go and, 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 uh, physically talk to him right so we will fast they fasted then right they were fasting we're also fasting now and should have been all along right so now if you've been away from fasting or you've never fasted then what we suggest is don't jump into it okay don't jump into it and be all right i'm going to do uh 40 days and 40 nights it, it, don't don't be silly about it all right anoint your head wash your face proclaim it in that way right and start by a meal you know start try to fast a meal right pick pick one i'm not i'm not gonna eat breakfast today you know and then i'll then i'll get back in at lunch right do that for a couple of weeks do a do a meal a couple of times and then move on to a couple of times a week right Try to do two meals. Do you understand the idea is to build yourself up, right? To move into it in that direction. Work yourself up to a day. Once you find that you can do a day, right? Do two days. Move yourself up, all right? Um, and like I said, if you're you're trying it out for the first time, you know, be smart enough that not to sit at the table while everybody's eating because that's, that's not going to help you at all out at all right and if 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 you're the wife and you got to fix the meal then then fix it and and say look excuse me i gotta i gotta go into the other room you know i'm gonna go spend time in, in another room while you guys eat right 
and, and work yourself up, work yourself up, move forward, move forward. Right. But don't try to be, you know, silly and say, well, I, I did the, I did the meal. Now I'm going to do seven days. No, I did the meal. Now I'm going to do a week. Uh, or, well, that's the same thing, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't get silly about it. Work yourself up. Right. <clears throat> and what you'll find is when you get to the point of the three to five days, that's really the hardest. Okay. That's really the, those are the hard, that's the hardest point. So you going through a day, going through two days, yeah, you're wrestling with the worst of it. All right. You're, you're wrestling with the worst of it. So, so understand that. <clears throat> All right. And if you get into the things with the headaches, you get into the things with, then rebuke it, right? Rebuke it and move on. That's the faith. Have faith. Start, start living in the miracles that way, right? That's, how, that's the beginning. So you see, that's the power of prayer, right? That's the power of what we were taught in prayer. Pray, believe, receive. Stand on it, right? Tell the stinking devil to get out of your head, huh? In Yeshua's name, all right? And then, and then get yourself into that, move yourself into the pattern, start start living it all right and then, now i wouldn't get yourself into a pattern of every time you want to uh you know every time you want to fast make it a 21 day fast i wouldn't i wouldn't do that all right it you again you need to be that needs to be worked up to I, anybody can get to seven days all right everybody can survive three days even though even though as i said you're gonna that's that's kind of the hardest the hardest part that you're working through all right, a couple more and you're on the road. All right, so so let's let's say you get get to that place. All right, so we've talked about moving yourself up into fasting. Now we're talking about breaking it. All right, you get yourself to the place where you're doing a three day fast. Don't go out after your three day fast and break it with McDonald's hamburgers. Okay, <laughs> don't don't go out and and sit down and eat a steak dinner uh, at a fancy restaurant. Because yes, you're 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 gonna want to be hungry. You're gonna want to, you know, you're gonna think that your stomach wants more than than uh, you, you've heard the expression, eyes were bigger than the stomach. Yeah, well, that's what happens after you fast. All right. So, uh, what you need to do is you eat some chicken noodle soup, something light. All right. Don't be taking in a lot of bread to break a fast, especially a long fast, uh, especially when you start talking about 21 days. Uh, be careful. You, you can you can end up having some real problems over over how you break the past all right and you can do that real quick you can mess up your colon okay so you know 10 days start out with a can of, of soup right you eat the chicken noodle soup and just leave it at that let it let your body work back into the process of, of digesting food again have a little bit of salad you know don't 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 gorge yourself right? And then uh, what you're doing is you're allowing your, your colon and everything to expand back into place, all right? But don't sit down and have a big old chicken dinner, right? Again, those are gonna, those are gonna you cause problems. You, you have to gently get yourself back into, back into the, the digestion process, all right? Your, your body for all natural purposes, your colon has decreased, your stomach is not used to having food in it, all right? So you're gonna have to, Take it easy again, and and don't drink a bunch of milk. Is that, don't have a milkshake. It's going to curd in your stomach, and you're going to have problems with that. All right. So it is a you know, you want to be careful. Understand the rules. God has has put some rules down. If you'll follow those rules, you'll be okay. If you don't follow these rules, then there's not much not much it's going to do to help you, right? But if, but if you want the success that we read about today, all right, the key is, is, is this is a commandment to the end time ministry, all right, ministry, people, because we are the repair of the breach. We are the ones that are going to make the paths. We're it. You know what the paths are? Us leading and guiding people back up that holy hill to the Lord God, all right? People that will keep the commandments, people that will keep Shabbat, keep new moon. We are the generation that the old prophet prophesied about. Let's go to prayer. 
Lord God in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your counsel. We thank you for taking the time to explain to us how it is that we can reach out to you and that we can open up ourselves. I pray that the understanding is there that, that when people go to try this for the first time that they understand that, we, that we're all able to look at the intents of our hearts when we move into that direction. I pray that we, that we are able to understand that we will be able to hear more clearly that, and what comes may be correction. And I thank you for the correction when it comes. Lord God, you love us enough. You love us even when we don't understand why you still love us and you still take care of us. And I glorify you for it. I glorify you for who you are. In the name of your Holy Son, Yeshua, amen. Well, have a blessed week. Shalom.